impact of Japan's bold policy moves, how do you rank developed versus emerging markets? The way I'd rank the globe is I'd have the US equity market at number one, Japan at number two, Europe at number three, and emerging markets at number four. Uh, the US equity market is fascinating. Do you know the best performing sectors in the first quarter were healthcare, consumer staples, and then utilities? We've got a bull market led by defensives, which sounds very counterintuitive, but the, what you need to look at there is M&A activity in the United States is up 64% year to date. Share buybacks are up 32%. What is going on there is that we're getting leverage buyouts in consumer staples. Why in consumer staples? Because that's where you find steady cash flow. Uh, there is a positive earnings yield differential between the earnings yield of the consumer staples and the 3% borrowing cost uh, that investment grade companies have today. Uh, so M&A share buybacks lead the bull market in the United States. It's about buying relatively inexpensive stable earnings streams rather than buying cyclicals. I talked already about the macro situation improving in Japan. In Europe, we did see an important improvement in funding conditions in Europe. And despite some of these issues in Cyprus, we do still believe that Europe will grow this year. Unfortunately, large cap EM looks troubled. Uh, Korea and Taiwan are the wrong side of the weakening yen in terms of competitiveness. Investors are confused about China's economic outlook. Uh, the central bank governor there has been talking about being preemptive in dealing with inflation. We've had a reimposition uh, of property price control measures. We already had a big stimulus in China in the second half of last year. And unfortunately, it doesn't seem to have generated the economic momentum that people were hoping for. In Russia, uh, there's general disappointment about another uh, period of leadership by pr uh, President Putin and the type of economic policy. And in Brazil, the economy continues to suffer from relatively high inflation and low growth. Uh, so this is why we would rank emerging markets at the bottom. But remember, emerging markets are alpha rich and beta poor. What I mean by that is within the right parts of EM, such as the ASEAN region, uh, within small caps, there are big returns to be got. So active managers are actually having a very good time in emerging markets today. What is the significance of 100 yen versus the US dollar? Yeah, look, I, I suspect it's, it's just an easy number to remember uh, rather than being particularly economically significant. The significant event is the weak yen policy plus this aggressive view to try and drive out deflation, target 2% inflation rate in Japan. Uh, we just had monetary data published in China uh, foreign exchange reserves, if I remember correctly, rose by around 128 billion uh, US dollars. Um, that suggests uh, that the uh, People's Bank of China have been intervening in the currency market to try and moderate uh, the ex uh, exchange traded appreciation of the renminbi. I think we're seeing similar stories with the Korean won and the Taiwan dollar. So I do think that we are going to see strains generating as com countries in Asia become, become concerned about their relative competitiveness.